to do this video for some time now, uh, maybe over a year. I just haven't figured out how to edit it, how to do everything. And it just hit me. You know what? I'm going to do this video, a small one. And then I'm going to send it over to my man here, this guy here, David Hoffman, who does uh, videos like this. But why is this so important? I'm going to just tie this in. Let me just jump to it. What does brake cleaner have to do with Elizabeth Jennings? Brake cleaner. We currently use it, right? Brake cleaners. Well, let's jump around a bit. Chlorinated brake cleaners, often sold as non-flammable, use, well, there it is, tetro chloroethylene. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce it right, but I think that might be close enough. These are your brake cleaners today. Our brake cleaners, what does it have to do? Well, I find it so amazing. You know, I love psychology and all that. Um, Thomas Jennings is the inventor of it. Uh, dry cleaning, dry cleaning products. This guy was the inventor of it. You're going to find him, him to be an amazing person too. And that's because Thomas Jennings, uh, L. Jennings, 1791, February 12th uh, through 1856, was born an African-American tradesman and an abolition and abolitionist in New York City, New York. He operated and owned a tailoring business in 1821. He was one of the first African Americans to be granted a patent for his method of dry cleaning. One of the first ones to, not, not, to be given a patent way back in seven, uh, 18, whoa, 1821. With the proceeds of his inventions, he brought his wife and children freedom. Then continued his civil rights work. He bought his wife and children freedom. They were still slaves until 1863. Um, you know, that's when it, slavery came to an end. So you can imagine, in 1821, how awesome this guy is to be able to invent something, get a patent on it, and then with the proceeds, um, you know, free his, free his wife and his children. Jennings, Jennings became active in working with, with his race and civil rights for the African-American community. In 1831, he was selected as an assistant secretary to the first annual convention of the people of color in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which met in June of that year. He helped arrange legal defense for his daughter. This is going to be the tie-in, Elizabeth Jennings in 1854. So this is nine years before this was all, it all ended. When she challenged, well, of course, it still continued. When she challenged a private streetcar company, segregation of seating and was arrested. So she was the first one to go in a streetcar. Remember uh, yesterday's video, the theme, it, how I debunked, uh, um, or I'm thinking I'm debunking uh, Leonardo da Vinci as the bridge inventor. Well, the streetcar deal was done way back in 1854, Philadelphia. And we can jump over to, that's him there, to his daughter, Elizabeth Jennings Graham. Elizabeth Jennings Graham was an African-American teacher and civil rights figure. In 1854, Graham insisted on her right to ride on the available New York City streetcar. So remember, just because it's not it's a free state doesn't mean they didn't have racism or segregation. At a time when all such companies were private and most operated segregated cars. That, that extended to where they had to change it. He, that's groundbreaking because they had to change it because they did... This began the protest. He had some money, and he had the. Uh, they realized that oh, they needed that black money, if you will. When it this all changed, you guys can segue in, into that. I uh, hopefully, um, uh, uh, hopefully, my man over here, Hoffman, will pick up the uh, do a much better job than I am. I'm going to definitely send it to him. All right, so uh, place of burial, Cypress Hill Cemetery, New York, New York. 1901 is when she exited. Sliding over, Thomas L. Jennings, look at it. There's the, uh, uh, our, our cleaner, if you will. And they hired, if you read, go into the case, you'll see how they had to hire, of course, a white attorney to represent them in her defense and fighting. And it's interesting read. I don't want to give away that for you guys. You should read it and, and have a little fun. But again, this is about our brake cleaner current day. And this man was... It's, it's the, it's, I'm sorry guys, it's the man brain that even though he came from, you know, such lower beginnings, if you will, his invention brain was just kicking in and he came up with this cleaner that we still currently use today. It is still used today. This is your perk, P-E-R-K, perk, P-E-R, perk, P-E-R, P-R-C, 
I think it is. Let's see if they have it here. Um, Thomas Elgin is the inventor and the patent of the commercial dry cleaning pro process known as dry scoring. On March 3rd, 1821, patent number US 3306X. He was the first African American to be granted a patent of any kind. Although there were attempts to prevent him, uh, opponents claim that the nature of the process was dangerous, and they're still using it today. He was the first African American to be granted a patent of any kind. And this was slavery time, just, just amazing. An early ad ad adapter of the commercial dry cleaning using turpentine was Jolie. Anyway, that's the previous. Um, modern dry cleaning use of non water based solvents to remove soil and stains from clothes was reported as early as 1855. But this guy owns it before then, um, 1821, right? It's, oh, yeah, right, 1821. Uh, shift to uh, tetrachloroethylene. Tetrachloroethylene. By the mid-1930s, the dry cleaning industry had adopted tetrachloroethylene. PERC, P-E-R-C, there it is there. Or PCE for short. Um, as the solvent, it is cho it is an excellent cleaner power, uh, excellent cleaning power. It has excellent cleaning power and is not flammable, compatible with most garments. Uh, which which that video I started to do and I had the content of it. I started using the brake cleaner on some dirty oily pants I had to show that it would uh, it would act as a perk. Problem is it was too powerful. The contents are too pure, and um, yeah, it took me a couple of washes to get that perk out. Interesting, segueing into a video I'm working for you guys now on rust removal. Awesome product. AS, awesome from the dollar store product is what I use to scrub the, uh, into my pants that I get dirty frequently. And it just brings them back to life. Um, they use a different product. I won't jump into that at this point. Uh, because they're stable, uh, tetra, tetrachloroethylene perk, that's what I know it is, P-E-R-C, is readily recycled. Perk is... Um, I remember I had some perk years ago from a dry cleaning company that the guy um, gave me a big old bottle of it. It was awesome to have that. Um, now you can just now I just use the awesome. But you can go on to the the perk his his amazing invention. Imagine you know him, him having to work the chemistry out. You know this is not. It's just amazing. It's still around today. So this year would be almost a um, uh, well next year March third will be the 100th anniversary of Thomas L. Jennings, this awesome black inventor who came from the slavery days, uh, I would like to add, um, whose family was, uh, well, clearly were slaves, uh, did this invention. And he's the first inventor, and we're still using this perk. There it is, right there. It was right in front of me in one of the tabs. So I just, I just grabbed them, opened them up, and you know I do my videos just off the cuff. Um, there it is there, the symbols, and it is just awesome, you guys, I'd welcome you to look up Thomas L. Jennings, and you will be amazed of what you may find, and anyone who does mechanical work, mechanics and all that, using brake cleaners, you'll have to thank Thomas L. Jennings, a black man from 1821, for his, uh, for his awesome invention. All right, you have to. You don't have to thank them. You have to thank. We have to thank. We have. Is that right? Yeah, whatever. I'm trying to say it. All right. Known as the African American civil rights figure, um, he spent his money with with helping out with this. His daughter, obviously. Um, I think she was a. Wait, was his daughter a slave? Right, and he bought his daughter out of slavery. Anyway, the, she uh, again. If you look this story up, you'll read that. Oh, here we go. Um, New York's Rosa Parks. Okay, yeah, there we go. New York's Rosa Parks. <laughs> the first. Okay, I'm going to terminate that. Hey, there it is there. You can chase down here. Um, but she's way before Rosa Parks, obviously. And will we break cleaner? Thomas L. Jennings. Um, slavery. All of it have to do to, all ties in. Hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed that little content. Take care.